Okay, boys and girls. Um, so what we are working on now is actually our next book. So we're going to skip out of our light and sound, and we're going to go to um, earth structures. So I know you do not have this at home. So what you're going to need to do is use either the online textbook, which in today's lesson I have it as a link. You just click on it. It will, uh, you know, you put in the username and password. Um, and then what you're going to do is it will take you right to the book. So when you're online in the book, it could read to you. You can make the font bigger or, or whatever. Um, but also I have, it's called lesson.pdf. If you wanted to, you could either download that or you could um, just view it and you can make it bigger. Um, there's a little plus sign, I believe, there. And um, you could just read from the lesson. So it's totally up to you, but you do need to read this lesson. Um, we are only going to do half of the lesson today and then half tomorrow. Today we're doing pages 32 to 37. Um, you don't have a, a quote-unquote assignment today um, except to watch this video. And I have another video called Intro uh, Video Clip to Minerals. Uh, if you just click on this little magnifying glass by the word view, if you click on that, it'll pop up. And I want you to watch that also. It's very important to make sure you read and watch the video. So it's it's a little bit of a long lesson. So that's why I'm bringing it up, breaking it up into two parts. Okay, so real quick, I'm, I'm not reading it to you. I'm just going to go over it. If you can't read it, then what you need to do is do the online textbook and let it read to you. All right, so a few things. My plan diary, uh, stalactite versus stalagmite. You might have heard of these terms before. I highlighted the C and the G there because stalactites, they hang from the ceiling and stalagmites, uh, they, uh, they're coming off the ground and they're um, mineral deposits. Okay, so what are minerals? And that's what we're studying today, the property of minerals. So a mineral is naturally occurring solid. It can be formed by inorganic processes that has a crystal structure and a definite chemical composition. Okay, so we are going to go over that in more detail in a couple minutes. Okay, so in order to be a mineral, we need to have several, um, it needs to have several characteristics. One thing, it, it needs to be naturally occurring. Okay, so naturally occurring means it, it forms naturally. So for example, it could form from magma, which cools under the Earth's surface, or it could cool from lava, which is coming from a volcano. Um, so uh, you're going to see that it says coal forms nat from naturally um, from plants and animals, how or from plants that are squeezed tightly together. However, note coal is not a mineral, and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. It must be solid, so a mineral must be solid. It has a definite size and shape. It has volume. Um, and it's tightly packed. Um, next thing is crystal structure it must have. So crystal structures are particles that line up in a pattern that repeats. This is called a crystal. So when you break it, they have flat sides, faces. They meet at sharp corners and edges. So you can see that right here in the quartz. So the quartz have flat sides and so forth. Now it looks like the coal does too, and the coal looks like it's a solid, but we're going to find out soon that it is not a mineral. Um, formed from inorganic processes. So what that means is it must be formed um, by materials that are not living. Okay, they can't be living. So it must be formed from magma. So coal though comes from living things. So coal comes from plants. Over millions of years they get packed together and forms coal. So coal is not a mineral because it's not formed by inorganic processes. Inorganic processes again are like magma or lava. Uh, they must have a definite chemical composition, um, which they contain certain elements. So certain elements are comprised of, like, atoms. So, for example, quartz always contains one atom of silicon for every two atoms of oxygen. Always. Always has that. So that's a definite chemical composition. So elements in coal, they vary over a wide range. So they cannot be a mineral. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. All right, so minerals and com compounds and elements. So minerals, compounds, and elements. Almost all minerals are compounds. Compounds are two or more elements are, are combined together. 
there's no distinct properties since they are combined. Uh, almost are pure, so solid elements are like metals. Gold, gold's a perfect example. All right, next and important part here is how are minerals identified? So this is this is real important. So there's different ways that we could identify minerals. And I have a video then for you to watch that uh, goes into and shows you how that they actually identify different minerals. So if you have all these different minerals, you need to look at it and say, okay, if you find something out in the field, you got to say, okay, what type of mineral this is? Well, s minerals have certain characteristics. So for example, gold has luster and the luster is metallic gold has a certain color, they have a streak and so forth. And when you look at those different things, you know, oh, that's gold. So each mineral has characteristic properties that you can use to identify it. One thing is color. So whatever the color of the mineral is, that will help you identify it. So um, gold, you know, is color gold or yellowish. And then if you look over here, you'll see uh, this one, and that's pyrite. And pyrite looks like it's gold. However, it's not. Um, next, uh, streak. So streak. So this is pretty cool. So you have a streak plate. That's that white uh, plate that you have there. And when you um, uh, take the mineral and you brush it against the streak plate, what happens? It leaves powder. And streaks do not vary, meaning this, that whatever color, whatever uh um, uh, mineral it is, it will always give you a streak and it will always be that same color. So for example, pyrite has a gold color, but its streak is always greenish black. So that's how, that's one way you could tell between gold and pyrite because pyrite, a lot of people call it fool's gold because it looks like gold, but it really isn't. One way to determine is to do a streak. So different streaks, different minerals produce different streaks and that's powder coming off of the, um, the uh, mineral. Last over here is luster. Luster is is usually described how it's reflected. So some are metallic like gold. Um, some look glassy, earthy, waxy even. Um, so they have all different types of ways that they, the luster comes out. All right, next is hardness. So hardness is based on how hard the mineral is, obviously, but you there's a way to identify. So Frederick Mose invented a scale to identify minerals. It's called the Mose Hardness Scale, and it ranks minerals from 1 to 10. 1's the softest, which is talc. Talc is very soft. You can scratch it with your fingernail. And the hardest is diamond. Diamond, the only way to scratch a diamond is to scratch it by another diamond. Um, so what you would do is they they you'd have to test it against other you could test it against other minerals or what you could do is um you could test it based on scratching with the fingernail if it scratches with the fingernail it's very soft uh all the way up to scratching uh, glass with it if you could scratch glass with it then it's a diamond it's very very um hard okay so we're going to move on next is um density Density is the mass uh, in a given space, and um, what density is 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 density always stays the same. Dense, the denser the material or mineral, the heavier it feels. And to figure out density, we don't need to do this, but it's mass, which is how much it weighs divided by the volume. Um, so. Uh, when density is, it's really how heavy it feels. So if you pick up a, a mineral and it feels heavy, that means then it's more dense. So something like talc, when you f pick it up, it's very light uh, versus uh, something like um, uh, feldspar. Feldspar is pretty heavy, so that's more dense. Okay, so that's all we're going to do today. So we're going to read, you guys are going to read page 32 to 37. Uh, you'll continue tomorrow with the rest, so make sure you watch the video uh, and make sure that you um, read the, from the book or from the lesson. Okay, boys and girls, have a great day.